Hello and welcome to you wherever you're listening from. Thank you for taking this time off to listen to us this morning as we encourage each other through the precious word of God. For, for encouragement this morning, we're going to base our uh, our encouragement from John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 46. Uh, the Bible will tell us that Jesus was around the, the shores of Galilee and that's where he obviously got all his, his disciples or some of his disciples. And, uh, and the Bible alludes to the fact that Jesus went and he found Philip uh, and he called Philip to basically follow him. And then Philip in turn goes and finds his friend uh, Nathaniel. When he finds Nathaniel, he says, Nathaniel, come and see the Messiah that comes from Nazareth. Now Philip and Nathaniel were from the area around Galilee. There were a few towns around Galilee. Nazareth was one of the towns. Cana of Galilee, we often hear in the Bible. And also Bethsaida was around in, in the vicinity. These were little villages within the peripheral of Galilee. Nathaniel comes from Bethsaida. They seem to be somewhat uh, old uh, civic rivalries between all these towns. So when Philip tells to Nathaniel, come and see the Messiah that comes from Nazareth. Uh, and Nathaniel retorts, uh, Nazareth? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Uh, the tone of, of his remark or the question or the form of that question could suggest there's some sort of rivalry between the towns. Uh, now Nazareth was a little dusty town in Ayal. I suppose so was the rest of them. And there was nothing that, that anybody needed, wanted, there was, uh, uh, the town was not glamorous, it was not popular, to the contrary. So nobody really knew the town except those that lived around there. So when, when Philip says, come and see the Messiah that comes from Nazareth, you can understand Nathaniel's, whatever you might term it, his disbelief, can a little town like Nazareth produce a Messiah that we've read about? But I like what Philip says to him. He does not defend what, what has been transpired. He does not go and find all the facts. He does not open the law and tries to show him. All he says, come and see. This morning I'm inviting you, let's take the journey. And when we, or whilst we take this journey, I'm gonna ask you a question, paraphrased. Those of us that are living in the 20th century or 2000 years after the fact, did anything come out of Nazareth? Nathaniel asked, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And I'm asking you today, did anything good come out of Nazareth? The Bible tells us Nathaniel would have followed the rest of the disciples wherever Jesus went. They come into Cana of Galilee, very close to possibly where they lived. And Jesus was invited to a wedding feast. And during the wedding celebrations, the wine ran out. Jesus' mother comes to Jesus and says, listen, the host does not have any wine. See if you can do something. So Jesus commands his disciples. I would like to think that Nathaniel was out that was there or followed or went with Jesus. And there were some jars lying empty. He commands them to fill it with the water. And once it was full to the brim, he, he commands them to take it and give it to the host. Uh, I can imagine what might have been going through the disciples. Uh, they're looking for wine and we're giving them water. But when the host tasted uh, what came out of those jars, uh, he was pleasantly surprised because this was the best wine that he's ever tasted. Nathaniel was there and Philip's uh, invite, come and see. And I'm telling you today as well, did anything good come out of Nazareth? Come and see. We go on and the Bible tells us as they were around that area in Cana, there was a leper that came to Jesus uh, and he was sick. And you, you well, might understand leprosy was a dreaded disease in those days. Uh, it was very contagious. Those that had it was ostracized from society. They were, uh, they, they were, taken out of where they lived and they were put as outcast. Uh, they were not allowed to mingle with the rest of the people. So you can understand uh, with uh, very sympathetic eyes, this man comes to Jesus. Uh, are you willing uh, to make me whole? And Jesus says, I am willing. Uh, and he restores this man to absolute good health. Uh, Nathaniel and Philip was there as part of the crowd. Uh, the Bible will tell us that as they, uh, they, they were within that area, from the town of Capernaum, uh, there was a, a Roman soldier that came in there. He, he, he's termed, or the Bible would call him, as a centurion. And I believe he had a hundred people under his command. And he was a commander of a hundred people in the Roman Empire or the Roman garrison. He comes to Jesus and says, well, my servant is paralyzed and very sick. Uh, can you make him all? And Jesus says, well, let's go to your house uh, and I will heal him. Uh, but, the, but the centurion says, uh, 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 I am not worthy for you to come to my house. So all I want you to do is just say the word. And I believe with that word, my servant would be healed. And the Bible tells us uh, 
the way he explained, the way he believed in what he asked for, Jesus responded, uh, and go, your servant would behold. Uh, guess what? Nathaniel was there. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Uh, he was there witnessing just the word that Jesus spoke. Fast forward, the Bible would tell us the disciples get onto with Jesus, get onto a boat, and they were crossing the ocean to go to another place. A furious storm arose, and, and, and the disciples, most of them that, that grew up around uh, the, the Sea of Galilee, that, that, that traversed the seas, that, that fished on these waters, were, were, were thoroughly scared because they've never experienced a so storm of this magnitude. And Jesus was resting uh, uh, very somberly below deck. Uh, the disciples go to him. And say, listen, are you not concerned that we are going to perish? So Jesus comes, uh, comes above and he says, uh, and, 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 and he speaks to the wind uh, and, and the storms uh, and he calms the seas. Uh, the disciples were all there. Nathaniel was there and they all remark, uh, what manner of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? I'm asking you today, did anything good come out of Nazareth? Well, the disciples were together once more when there was in this town and there was a multitude of people and Jesus was thrown and there was no space. There was a woman that was suffering with an issue of blood for 12 long years and she came She heard that Jesus was going to uh, be in this town and she came for a healing and she just thought to herself, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I will be made all. I don't need to go in front of him and, and labor my case. Just touch the hem of his garment and I will be made all. The Bible tells us when she comes into town. And rightly so, there was so much of people around Jesus and she could not gain access to Jesus. Uh, and she somehow manages just to touch the hem of his garment and she was made instantly old. And Jesus suddenly asked the question, who touched me? Who touched me? And I'm sure all the disciples, Nathaniel included, thought that it was an absurd question. Everybody is pressing towards Jesus. Uh, how is it we're going to find out that, that who the person was that touched Jesus? But Jesus said, somebody definitely touched me because I, I, I felt power flow out of me. This woman comes very Charlie says it was me. I just thought if I can touch the hem of your garment, I will be made whole. And she was cleaned immediately. She was delivered of the sickness. Uh, Nathaniel was there. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Uh, I'm asking you after listening to this testimony, after listening to this record, did anything good come out of Nazareth? Uh, well, the disciples once more embarked when Jesus was teaching and it was the old and multitudes, multitudes uh, followed him because they, uh, they, they, they loved what he had to say. And people that were sick also came to be healed. It was an entire day's procession. Bible tells us towards the afternoon, Jesus had compassion on the people. They were gone the old day and we needed to feed them. Uh, so he says the disciples find some food that we will feed them. And they all moaned and muttered against themselves uh, that everything is closed and you need money and they found somebody with two loaves and five fishes or five loaves and two fishes uh, and they bring him there Jesus prays he blesses uh, and he feeds over 5,000 people Nathaniel was there can anything good come out of Nazareth today I'm asking you those of you that are, that are listening did anything good come out of Nazareth and absolute yes the Bible tells me the healer divine came from Nazareth the one that can set you free came from Nazareth. The one that can, can provide for you came from Nazareth. My friend, the one that died for you came from Nazareth. The one that rose from the dead came from, from Nazareth. The one that is coming back for you hails from Nazareth. Nazareth might have been a dusty old town, but the greatest phenomenon to grace this world ever came from a little dusty town called Nazareth. Can anything good come from Nazareth? Yes. Jesus, the Son of the Most High God, came from Nazareth. Every eye bowed and every eye closed. Perhaps you don't know who Jesus is today. He's come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. My friend, he's come that you could have eternity. And there's only one way to do it. Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. Uh, all you need to do is believe in your heart and confess in your mouth that he's come. Uh, he's died on the cross, he's been to the grave, he rose and he's coming back for you. That's all you need to confess. And if that's you today saying, give me this opportunity to do, to do so, I'd like to pray with you. A very simple prayer. Father, forgive me for my wrongs. Forgive me for my transgressions. Uh, I am a sinner. Save me. I recognize today, I realize, and I confess with my mouth that you are Christ, the Son of the living God. So won't you forgive me and cleanse me in Jesus' name. Amen.
Perhaps there's somebody that's not well in, in body today. The healer divine comes from Nazareth. Allow me just to pray for you. Father, today we come at those that need your touch. Physically, we command everybody to line up with the word of God right now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we command every bone and marrow, every ligament, every tissue, Lord, every cell, every organ uh, to be touched supernaturally right now in Jesus' name. We plead the blood of Jesus on everyone. Healing is the children's bread. And Father, right now we ask that you would touch everybody that's believing you for a miracle in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Receive that healing right now in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you for taking time off to listen to us this morning. We trust that our encouragement today will bring comfort to your souls. It will bring joy to your hearts and it will bring healing to your bodies. Thank you once again and God bless you.